Hello YouTube, I haven't posted a video in a long time, uh, I've been meaning to uh, set up a schedule for these videos, it's just uh, a lot of per uh, things in my personal time uh, kind of drain me from, uh, from this activity. I'm still doing my comic book uh, Jump Buster. And it's online at www.jumpbuster.com, all lowercase. And I've been struggling to build an audience for the past uh, few months or so. So if you could go to that website, which I'll post the link below, and uh, send me an email in the, co in the contact section, and tell me what you think of the pages, that would be great. And I'm also hoping at some point to get better production for these videos so I can do some movie reviews, kind of like with, with maybe with pictures, so you don't have to kind of just look at my face the whole time, unless you really want to look at my face the whole time. But if, if I can get better production value at some point, that would be great. And also I have a blog Scott Blaine purchase at Blogspot, and Jumpbuster now has an Instagram account, and he's also on Facebook and Twitter. You can find the links to those pages uh, on the website too, but I'm just still struggling to build an audience, and it does require a lot of money, like something ridiculous, like a dollar a day, and before you know it, you spent like three three hundred dollars, and I don't have that kind of money just for around. But um, I'm here to talk about three things: uh, the Batman versus Superman Dawn of, du Dawn of Justice trailer. They clearly can't make up their minds of what to name this movie, and uh, the Star Wars Episode Seven. The Force Awakens trailer and the potential new Spider-Man we don't know the identity of yet for whatever upcoming Spider-Man movie that we freaking just don't want to see and we're not even freaking asking for. But here's the thing with the Batman vs. Superman trailer. I saw two trailers and I believe that the first one I saw was a fake. It had what looked like Ben Affleck wandering through like the rubble or something, and it had Jesse Eisenberg in it, but it didn't look like it was from the Social Network or any of his other movies, and it had uh, Ben Affleck ref referring to um, uh, Clark Kent Superman as Cal. I believe, I strongly believe this video was fake, and if anyone can confirm that for me, please do so below, but from what I saw with um, the trailer, which leaked online, and Zack Snyder just had to put it online for, because of peer pressure, I mean, I really don't know what to think about the trailer, or this movie in general, because, I mean... They're getting us excited. They're, they're going to get us excited. They're doing everything they can to rev us up for this movie. But the thing about Zack Snyder is, I mean, when I knew his name was attached to a Superman movie, I was pretty ecstatic because uh, 300 was a very uh, visually stunning film. And when I saw those, when the Spartans had those capes, I mean, they pretty much screamed Superman, and it was a little reason like that that made me think that that Snyder was perfect for this project, but the problem is with Zack Snyder is he just doesn't care about the little details about the characters, like just these little details. And if you take the littlest detail away from these characters, it can ruin them. Like... For example, Lois Lane having red hair, or she's strawberry blonde, and she's a little short. 
she kind of screams more Lana Lang. I mean, I Amy Adams is a terrific actress. Don't get me wrong. It's just I feel like it should have I, a part of me, a small part of me. You, you can reveal a, you're free to criticize me if you want to. It should have gone to a more Sandra Bullock type actress, but then again. She's way, Sandra Bullock's way too old. And Amy Adams was, is, was and probably is still one of the best actresses to play Lois Lane around. But it, it, it's just these little details that Snyder just doesn't care about. The thing that outraged me the most about Batman... Man, like I said, they can't just make up their minds about the freaking name of this movie or what it's even going to be about. I mean, Jesse Eisenberg is Lex Luthor. And it's what I already said about these little details. I mean, yes, I understand that, oh, they wanted Brian Cranston just because he was bald. And Brian Cranston, I thought, what well, would not be right for Lex Luthor, and but people are always like, oh, well, Billy Zane would do very well because he's bald, but Billy Zane, I believe, hasn't really done much projects in a while. But why on earth would they pick? Jesse Eisenberg. It's making this is big. It's things like this that's making me question. Ryan, I mean, I was about to call him Brian Singer because we might as well call him Brian Singer at this point if he's making these kind of decisions. I mean, has he even looked into the source material? Does he even care? I mean. Just go back to the John Byrne uh, years of, of the Superman comics during the reboot. and Or just the animated series and you'll know. You can easily know what kind of character, what type of character Lex Luthor is supposed to personify. But they're going to make him a young social media ex executive who's young up and with an up and coming company and is very obnoxious and drinks a lot of energy drinks all the time we know he's going to be bald we've seen a picture of him being bald it's just Jesse Eisenberg with, with a shaved head awkwardly staring into the camera and it doesn't, and it doesn't show us anything about the character, but that does not scream Lex Luthor. This is not the kind of Lex Luthor that's gonna get in that 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 uh that that green or or purple battle suit and and duke it out with Superman. He's not the the intimidating Lex Luthor that wears the the suit and and smokes cigars and is just very evil he's not intimidating enough and other little things like Smallville having an IHOP and a Sears does take away that that simplicity and the, the humble nature that you, that, that you love about that world and Henry Cavill had the physique for Superman but part of me still debates. Does this look screen more James Bond? <laughs> and other little things. Like, obviously they picked a great actor to play Aquaman, but he's not the Aquaman we know. And it's, again, it's, it's going against those little details like the hair color and the color of his suit. He's not in his orange green suit. I know that looks ridiculous. 
but it's what personifies the character. If he doesn't like this material, I don't know why he's bothering with it. If he just wants to just do everything his way. And I don't know. This could be a rumor. I think they confirmed it might be true. That Aquaman and Wonder Woman, again with Wonder Woman, little details. They, I think they made a huge mistake casting Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. But... Again, we don't know for sure how well she's going to do. But again, from what I heard, they're going to make both Aquaman and Wonder Woman Kryptonians. And that, again, takes away what we love about the characters and the story. And if Batman vs. Superman fails... DC won't have a film franchise like Marvel. And where would they go? And where would they go from there? I mean, even if they ignore these little details, and in ways ruin what we love about these characters, this movie could obviously still have enough action to spawn a sequel. Or to spawn a series of film of films. If It, could, it can pull everything off. But from what I've seen from the Batman vs. Superman trailer with people questioning Superman's position on this Earth. Like, it goes with the New 52 story where people are, are now being questioned questionable about Superman being on this earth and what, what, what role he plays instead of how they did in in both the Golden Age and the Silver Age and the, and the, and the John Byrne revamptation and, and every and most of the th things that followed afterwards they, they people always embraced Superman and they and they embraced that the, 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 there was a man uh, like this on our planet but but now it's like kind of how 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 Batman was at the beginning of his first movie and that movie had its flaws they're questioning like I guess if he could maybe become a threat or if he's too powerful and on that statue it it's spray painted false god and it's got their own Superman task force, SWAT officers of Superman symbols uh, on their arms. And it, it just goes to say that they, that Marvel knows what it's doing with their film franchise, despite in the past. They had a lot of movies they couldn't nail right, like Hulk and Daredevil and Fan and Fantastic Four and The Punisher. But they were really able to revamp their whole franchise with um um with starting with Iron Man and then getting them all together with the Avengers. But but in their universe they know that their superheroes have to be Heroic and save and save people, but I'm seeing too many dark elements in this trailer. Like I'm seeing these people in makeup that look like zombies standing behind Superman, and again, like I just said, it looks like a carbon copy of Man of Steel with Batman in it, and again with Ben Affleck. I think I've said this before that I'm concerned he doesn't have. I think the financial credibility to be able to rep reprise his role if this movie is a success, a success because 
I think Ben Affleck is a terrific a actor, but the problem is, I think this problem, above all, falls on him doing these kind of movies. Is is just he's got other movies to make. I mean, actors like like Ben Affleck and Tom Cruise, they are what personifies Hollywood and what people go to the movies for. They're they're really on the A-list. And, and I mean, he's got other movies to make. He's got other projects to do. And I don't know if he, how deep he'd be able to get into this, this film franchise. And talk, once again, I've read this. This is a spoiler. You can stop this video if you want. But I hear that Bat that Batman is gonna come up in this story, because you look in the in the in the teaser in the trailer, he's got gray hair along here. And I think it said that he uh Batman came thirty years before Superman. And that's why he's kind of old and a little bit seasoned, but he's not completely worn down. But again, that's another little detail that they've taken up. I think that uh, Snyder and, and whoever, whatever, whoever else is behind this movie has taken advantage of way too much. And again, I just cannot take Jesse Eisenberg seriously as Lex, as Lex Luthor even from what I have seen because he's not the Lex Luthor we know and you can argue that well Michael Rosenbaum was a bit awkward for the Lex Luthor, Luthor role but that's kind of all another subject because they kind of want uh, Superman and 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 move forward to be kind of the same age, going back to that kind of source material. But from what I have seen, this takes a lot of inspiration from the Dark Knight Returns. And what can I say? I mean, the fan reaction to this movie hasn't been so great. Reaction to Star Wars. Episode 7, The Force Awakens, has been much more positive, and people have been much more excited about this film. And the fact that it's coming out so soon, during this Christmas, is getting a lot of people excited because when Star Wars comes to town, it's a big event. I mean, it's like a circus. I mean, I remember from all the prequels. It was just everywhere you went. You could not get away from it. And I I, I mean I thought it was over. For good. But now it's back and from what I've seen from the tr from the this trailer, we don't know I I don't know for sure if that's Luke talking at the beginning. They say that dialogue is from Return of the Jedi and a little bit of the dialogue has been altered. But we still know a little about what role uh, the Elder Skywalkers are going to play in this movie. And, there's, and we know from what we've seen there's going to be a new uh, 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 Imperial Uprising and we don't know who, I forget the name of that, that girl who looks like a cross between um, Natalie Portman and Carrie Fisher. She's running with that spear. We know that spear um, has something to do with the story, but we don't really know. We know, we still know that, um, um, I'm having a ma massive brain fart. That guy from Attack Block, um, what's his name? I, 
John Boyega. We know that, once again, he's in a lot of trouble. We don't know for sure whose side he's on. But the most compelling moment about in this trailer was seeing the aged uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca. Chewbacca hasn't aged, but Han Solo has, which I don't know. I don't know why. And they're in the Millennium Falcon and they say they're home. And that obviously got a lot of people excited. And I think Harrison Ford got way too much crap he deserved for um, uh, Indiana Jones and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But that scene alone, what I just said, is probably going to make a lot of people mad. And that's a, But that's a whole other subject for another time. And I, I don't know if he's going to... How much he's going to put into the performance of Han Solo. But we know that they're back in the Millennium Falcon. And there's that Star Destroyer in the desert. And this looks... Unlike the prequels, this looks... Like a Star Wars movie. Because the problem with the prequels was... I mean, George Lucas had done so much for the, the film industry... With industrial light and magic and special effects, and he gained so much credibility. It was to the point where no one can really tell him no. And if you if you look at the special features um, in the Star Wars prequels, it's just it's it's just people going, "That's great, George. That's fantastic, George." No one can tell him no. And the, and what makes any production production of anything great is individual people working together. I mean, he had a lot of people in, in the original Star Wars films, I think he had a lot of people change the scripts and throw in new ideas like, hey, why don't you change this? But during the Star Wars prequels, he just had control to just do whatever he wanted and make whatever decisions he wanted. And I think that created a lot of problems. And I think another problem was his inability. I hear he had an inability to work with actors. And he hated working with actors. And it's my personal opinion, or what I assume, which led to the casting of, of like, uh, Hayden Christensen, who, who we all know was just a horrible actor. And gave a horrible performance as Anakin. But. I think. That might have been what peer pressured Lucas. To sell us to Disney. So just surrender his own franchise. To another company. And have different. Producers and a different director. Working on his own creation. Which. He is clearly in love with. And he is hurt by what people have said about the movie. But. Again. He just had. He just became a kid in the candy store. And it was just out of control. And. Without. All, all the crazy green screen. And over the top CGI. And going back to old fashioned special effects. Uh, from what I've seen, The Force Awakens feels like a like a real solid from Star Wars movie, the type of Star Wars that we know. And a few other things that planet is not Tatooine is called like Jakku. So I think the Millennium Falcon was flying into that Star Destroyer that was in the distance. I don't know for sure. And that ball droid that got a lot of crap is a real robot. But again, there's just so little we know about these trailers. And there's very little material I could I can really build off of. So it's very hard for me to say anything further about... Uh, the Star Wars of For Force Awakens trailer. Of uh, we're excited, and and we can't wait till this Christmas till it comes out. And again, I'm gonna now switch to uh, 
new Spider-Man. I have a whole blog on my blog site. Uh, Scott Blake purchased Blogspot. I think that's what it's called. If you want to go read, I have a whole long blog about Amazing Spider-Man 2 and how awful it was. And it took me a very long, very long time to write because there were so many things I had to say about Amazing Spider-Man 2. Because what can anybody say? Because it disappointed a lot of people. And it disappointed me. I had such high hopes. I really loved Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. I liked him so much better as Tobey Maguire. I mean, he was as close to the, the Peter Parker from the comics as we could probably, as we can possibly get. He was kind of tall, tall and wiry and not quite as nerdy as Tobey Maguire, as I said before, but they're going to revamp this franchise again. We don't want another Spider-Man movie. Nobody's asking for another Spider-Man movie, but they're going to make one anyways. And there's, I hear, and I don't want to look at the video because it's going to show a spoiler. I want to go see the movie, Avengers Age of Ultron. Because at the end of the credits, they say that Spider-Man apparently appears at the end. And I think what's going on right now is we don't know who's going to play the new Spider-Man. But I think they know who their guy is and they're just not telling anybody. I think they found their guy, whoever he is. I think they know who's playing them and they're just not telling. And they're just not really putting it out there. But I think they... they they know who their who who their guy is, and they've already found them. And I'm probably gonna find find out because I don't I don't know anything about the footage from from the new Avengers on who's gonna play Spider Man. They confirmed it's still gonna be Peter Parker. They say it's he's gonna have his classic suit. But yeah, it's such a shame that we can't see Andrew Garfield again as Spider Man because it was the wrong time. For a new Spider-Man film, because everyone was the the Spider-Man three still lived in everybody's mem memory, and it was just the wrong time because we needed some time to to get it out of our memories and be able to get it into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And, but instead, it was it was under the Sony umbrella, which company has been having a lot of problems. I mean, it couldn't branch out into the Marvel Universe. And Andrew Garfield just got into this franchise at the wrong time. It was the wrong movie at the wrong time, and that's what's now led to this problem. That we now have to see another Spider-Man again, but it's not going to be the origin story all over again. They're going to skip that. But there was so much I was looking forward to. I mean... How, seeing how Peter would cope with with the death of Gwen and what and what Mary Jane could play in this role, who could play Mary Jane. But Amazing Spider-Man Two just had so many problems; it just sent any hopes for that for that movie down the hill. It's like in your it's like in your heart you want this. You think. Oh, a sequel could just rewrite this movie's problems, but in reality, it can't. And it's like if Superman Returns. When I first, first saw that, I mean, I got excited about that movie for an entire year from the moment I heard about it, June 2005 till June 2006. I literally got excited over every single piece of news that came out from the very first piece of news that came on uh, the Superman homepage from the very day the movie came out. And what I got was a very different movie than what I was hoping for, which had a lot of flaws, a few entertainment values, but wasn't per but as we all know, isn't 
quite perfect in, in ways that some of us don't want to admit. And now that Man of Steel has come out, we're more willing to admit it. But I think this the same problems apply to Amazing Spider-Man 2. That you think, oh, if there's a sequel, it can fix all these problems. But it can't. And they just have to start all over now. And it's such a shame. And I really loved Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. And they totally just ruined and butchered her character. And it was so heartbreaking. But he, I, I believe that the new Spider-Man is going to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And they're going to skip the origin story. And maybe they can still throw in those elements. Like maybe this is an idea I'm just kind of throwing out there. That maybe they can start the movie off if they want to. With Gwen Stacy's death, death after her death. And kind of have show... Peter Parker, Spider-Man coping with that, but I think it's just gonna start out with, with, if he if he if he he'd been Spider-Man for a while and he's still, and he's pretty much gotten the hang of hang of the gig, just yeah, I'm an ordinary guy swinging for the city, blah blah blah, blah. that whole story we already know, and and yeah, they pretty much know it at this point. I think, and they're just not telling us who's going to play Spider-Man. And that's pretty much it for my my movie news roundup. Just go to my comic book site. I'll post the link below. And there will be other links on that site to my blog spot, uh, the Jump Buster Twitter page, and Jump Buster Facebook page. And yeah, and if you want, subscribe. But nobody really watches these videos anyways. So, uh, uh, thank you. Bye.